viewer release candidates, um, stuff that's in release candidate cohorts anyway. Um, we have the stat test viewer, which is actually not ever intended to be a release. Um, it exists only as a comparison for to try to figure out how big an effect a particular bug in the Google Breakpad that was discovered and fixed in the Google Breakpad branch was having on release. So we're just using it to compare crash rates. Um, it will that branch will die and be put away. The only change it's got is already in the Google Breakpad branch, which we're thinking is getting pretty close now to final form. Um, we'll know more by early next week when we have a good set of statistics. Uh, and then other ones that have been brought up to date with fewer release are interest list and merchant outbox. The most recent set of releases was a bunch of uh, threading, primarily threading problems that Modi did bringing our FMOD stuff back into line. Um, so, uh, but those, those went out, was it the beginning of this week, I think? Um, and then the merchant outbox fixes are also out in a release candidate. Um, other ones that are not, have not been brought up to date are the voice viewer, which I expect we'll see on Monday and, uh, sunshine, which will, you know, another attempt at merging that up, um, which will be sometime next week, I think. Um, and then we, we have a couple of project viewers out, the zipper viewer, and of course the Oculus Rift viewer that you've heard about. That one's sources aren't public yet, but will be at some point. Um, the, uh, the, the, the beta developer beta for that seems to be going real well. Um. And no, I don't have any idea when it will progress to the next stage. Um, the group bands thing has gotten, has benefited from some good testing, bringing updates to that. Uh, there is a snowstorm branch. Um, we're hoping to get one or two more things in there before I move it forward. But since the release cohorts are so crowded, I'm, there's no big rush to get any of that out. Um, um, so uh, let's see, other things. AIS V3 next week will actually be turned on on all three release candidates uh, on all, all three simulator RC channels. Um, it will be not only deployed, but active. Um, and of course, uh, we have the the new voice binaries, which you should be picking up when you can. Um, they do seem to be a big improvement, at least on Max. Um, Has the Linux package been uh, upgraded by any chance? Sorry, Lin my volume is very low. Hang on a second. What did you say, Latif? I said, uh, has uh, the Linux package been updated? No, no, I haven't gotten one from Vivox. I'll, I'll ping them. We, I meet with them monthly. Uh, I'll, I'll ping them about that. A, a question about uh, you mentioned the FMOD uh, fixes that Monty was working on. Um, does that do anything to resolve the problem that we seem to be seeing with uh, streams that have ads in them dropping out? Dropping the ads or dropping the streams? The, the streams drop. If there's an external ad source on a stream, it, uh, the stream dies. And in most cases, it, it requires the user to relog to get the stream back. Uh, I have no idea. Monty, do you know? Uh, no, not specifically. There is, um, there are almost a year of fixes between the differences. There are screen dropping fixes in it, but I can't tell you that it fixes any specific problem. Uh, the best place to go is actually the FMOD site. 
and um, they do publish their point fixes. And there is a quite a list between 4, 44, 12 to uh, up to 31. Um, but it's going to be experiment and test right now. I can't say it fixes any of them. Ed, could you send me uh, an example of a stream that exhibits that behavior? I'd love to if I could reproduce it. Uh, we, we get a lot of users going out to clubs that have the problem, though. Yeah, Worley's on it. She can help you. I will say if you can reproduce this, get the information to us as quickly as possible. The FMOD people are actually very responsive. Um, we can get you, some action on it. You should upgrade your uh, FMOD X. I mean, the Firestorm. I, I believe we did, but... Uh... Um, you are, you are we, 25, we... and the 31 is the latest, and ours, we were having trouble with some Linux and Mac users that their viewer would freeze or even crash on when, when, when a DJ switches streams around. And this 31 seems to fix that. It was only Linux um... and Mac. The FMOD X we released with uh, has been actually working very good for us um, with very few problems, although uh, I know Tank has merged in uh, Linen Lab's latest uh, FMOD X fixes. I'm not sure if uh, that's been changed or not as well. Ah, so you have shipped with 31. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, I'm not convinced that we're better off with that version, but we'll see. So, Monty, that link that Worley put out um, should help somewhat, I think. Okay, I will take a look at that. So, uh, that's really I, all I had. I didn't have any any earth-shaking announcements this week or anything else that was... Any news on Facebook? Uh, oh, the um, the photo blocking thing. Um, you had a user today asking why it wasn't working. Right. Um, no, I have not heard any update on getting them to turn the block back off. Uh, so, I, 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 don't, I don't know what the status of that is. I mean, we've made changes designed to address both in the viewer and in the intermediate service layer that uh, the viewers requests that, that the up the photo posts go through um, to to address what they said the problem was um, but I, I don't know when it will start working again you know, after buying Oculus, they will be buying you next, so that that's going to solve itself very soon anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, no comment. Um, okay, so I have to nag you, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to make this a, an occurrence for each third party of your meeting that we do going forward, because I have support people who um, are raging and uh, and a lot of users that are raising raging. So uh, I asked really for a list of the bugs that are um, uh, uh, Coco related bugs on Mac uh, because we have Mac users who continually insist that um, you know 461 and anything recent is not usable. There's the paste. Uh... If if I had people who could fix these things, we would be putting all of our resources to it. But I just don't. Okay. Would would you? Uh, Is I, your parser not working? What's that? Your parser. I thought you had a parser here that parsed those things. No, no, it's um, it's not working. Um. Uh, I can put them. I uh, will have. Let me just copy yeah. paste, stick, and I'll throw it in a note card. Email. Or an email. Like okay. Note cards. I don't. <laughs> you see, linens don't don't work in in world. I don't you work on email. Live here. I 
live in my inbox. My email. <laughs> Don't be silly, Jess. You're expecting Lindens to use Second Life. <laughs> <laughs> the irony runs thick. Okay. Sending you an email. Okay. And and I'm going to uh, send you this I, email I, every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not overdo it. Uh, I haven't got anybody to assign to these things either, uh, but, but, uh, but I hear you, and I will at least poke at them and see what I can do. Well, I just want to apologize right now in advance, Oz, because every third-party viewer meeting, you, you're going to get bugged about it. Oh, that's that's okay. I mean, that, I, I don't mind. Uh, there could be. I, I have to pass the buck because we got users <laughs> passing the buck to us and support passing the buck to us, and I got to pass the buck to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm going to formally apologize to everyone in the room ahead of time for our April 1st, April Fool's Day joke. So it's out there, I've apologized, and you probably won't see me for a few days after April 1st. Uh, the yeah, support please. team is... Preemptive apologies, they don't count. The preemptive, yeah. Oh, they've got to count because <laughs> cause I don't want to be anywhere near Second Life <laughs> afterwards. N n not even the majority of our team knows about it. There's only a very few. Yeah, is. very few. And uh, they've just, just apologized to them at our uh, uh, support meeting in advance. And uh, half of them booked a week off. Well, I'm looking forward to finding out what it is in the fullness of time. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, of all the people here, Jess, I think Oz will be the one that appreciates it the most. Possibly. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, after about two days after, probably about April 3rd, um, we'll make a blog post um, addressing, because we did that with, with Firestone Mobile, right? After we made the joke, a couple days later, we kind of, okay, okay, it was a joke, and we'll sort of do that again as well in a couple days. So I have been trying to figure out the algorithm that Oz uses to, to rank those uh, statistics crash or disconnect rates. And I have failed to reverse engineer the algorithm. So Oz, could you, could you try to explain how, how you come up with that list? I sort all the viewers that, have, that, that are reporting crash rates by... Uh, the, the number of minutes, or by the disconnect rate, in increasing order of disconnect rate. Um, then I go through that list and pick out the most popular released version of each viewer. Um, so if you have if you have a lower version number that's got more usage, then that's the one that appears in the list. At least you rank that by minutes? Um, yes, by, right. Not by sessions, by minutes. Um, sessions how... turns out to be kind of a weird measure because there are zillions of... of it changes um, constantly. Very, very short sessions. People who log in and log out again in less than a minute. There, there are lots of those, that, or maybe they're crashing. I don't know. Um, so how come you list the, uh, um, the, the two Firestone versions there? 
Yeah, well, that's because it, I didn't bother editing out the 64-bit uh, version. Uh, Actually, the, it's, uh, it's, I prefer that because uh, it's nice to get some independent stats between the 32-bit and the 64-bit. Right, well, uh, I would really like to get to the point where we can do that routinely without having the channel names be different, and at some point I will ask you to change the channel names back and... Um, make them the same, but not until we can give you separate stats on them. Uh, well, I, you know, I'll have to see how that how that goes. Uh, I'm certainly not going to make any, any predictions about when I'll have that capability. Uh, but uh, that was certainly the intent. The I mean, the thing that led me to to make that change in the in the short term is that we've spent a bunch of time looking at how those numbers are generated in our own code um, and finding really serious bugs in it. Um, some of those bugs you don't have, but in any event, um, I just decided that going with a metric that was the same for everybody was was better. I suspect. Uh, Latif, that that's um, somewhat disadvantageous to any viewer that's on a mobile platform because people tend not to log out of them; they just switch them off. Um, so that it's gonna, you're gonna get lots and lots of spurious disconnects. Um, yeah, that, I, I think that's yeah. just a usage pattern for people on mobile devices that you know we have to expect. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, the, the, I'm open to suggestions for better ways to order that top section of the popular viewers. Um, I, I think that um, doing it by crash rate was really useful there for a while. Um, I don't think it's bad now, but uh, I'm open to suggestions on better ways to do it. The one I'm not interested in is ranking them by popularity because that's self-reinforcing, right? That's a positive feedback loop. So uh, I don't mind, you know, making a section that's the most heavily used viewers. But, uh, yeah, I could do alphabetically. But then we'll have somebody <laughs> naming themselves the triple A viewer. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I, those, all those numbers are really strange, and I don't think they have very much value anyway, you know, because... First of all, you cannot uh, seem to be able to sort them by the viewer channel correctly. And then some viewers have like uh, bigger uh, crash rate than disconnect rate, which also doesn't make sense. Right. And all sorts of weirdness in those numbers. So I don't, I don't, I don't really, you know, put much value into that ranking or I was just wondering what sort of algorithm you were using to, to display it. Yeah, Wizardry. I, yeah. Uh, I'll, if if you want, I'll send you the Perl script. Send me the SQL statement so I can fix it, because apparently nobody there can. Uh, it well, it's not sort of. It's, I'm not doing it in the SQL. I I get a I get a dump of. No, I mean the the one that in, gets the viewer channels wrong and that cannot group them correctly. Uh, oh, it's way more involved than that the the and and i haven't figured out where the problem with that is um the, yeah, i know it's been like that for like eight months now so yeah but a long time um the yeah what happens is that those stats packets go into they get you know as part of the login handshake that goes to the login cgi script that gets lo logged in a text file on the login servers, which at, in some batch process then mines those lines out and puts them in um, a database. And um, and then that database somehow gets extracted and put in another database from which the statistics are generated. Um, and I, I don't, I, I actually don't know what any of those intermediate steps really are. I have not, looked, not found that code. 
What's what's your question for Monty, Jess? Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask. Um, I brought this up to you. I don't remember a week ago or last the week before. So anyways, uh, HTTP. How's that going? Is has there been like additional load on the server? Is the server handling it flawlessly? Um, because we, we, we've had some weird reports, and uh, since we released, and, and it was it's odd because during QA everything was 100 percent positive. And uh, it seemed like the more people, as people were upgrading to 4.6.1 um, throughout the release period, um, we seemed to be getting more and more complaints that somehow might be related to HTTP, but of course we don't know. And so we were just wondering if, you know, the additional new people using the HTTP protocols might have been causing some additional load? Not that I can tell. Um, nothing, that, well, I'll put it this way, nothing is getting to me if, if there is any such story. Um, I've heard the anecdotes, and whenever I've looked into them, the stories behind them are generally pretty random. Um, it's people associating recent changes with a behavior they're seeing and producing a correlation where there isn't any. That said, um, there's some patterns that continue to persist that have existed since um, at least the past three years that I've been dealing with transport issues. Um, simulators are uh, have always had uh, problems in the web services, um, particularly connection quotas being exceeded, and that's still going on today. It hasn't changed. Um, a busy region on a busy sim host is still a problem. And, um, but I can't say that it's actually worse today. And if anything, it should be better. But again, the data I'm getting, which is almost none, um, doesn't point to any problem. I'm sorry, it's not <laughs> definitive, but uh, uh, that's all I've got at this point. Is there any way of uh, getting more granular information? My experience with these uh, HTTP downloads is that if you are on an empty sim, I mean, by empty I mean not many avatars. It can be very, you know, full with prims and everything. HTTP performs much faster and much better than UDP. But if you go to a sim that has 20 or 30 avatars in it, you are better off switching to UDP, UDP for texture download because it will be much faster than, than waiting for HTTP which seems to stall a lot when there is a lot of people on, on a simulator. Well, see, so we have, and like Worley said, it, it's a small number, but a small number, a small percentage of our users is still a lot of people. And, and um, I know my inbox has been, you know, pretty full of people saying they, they, they just can't use 461, they have to go back. And so I'm, I'm worried about moving forward. Um, you know, we're probably going to have to figure out what's going on here because uh, so the, the the complaint mainly, I think, is um, texture is not loading. Uh, you know, just completely stalling, um, and not uh, not necessarily avatar textures, but just prim textures of anything. Um, yep, and texture. they claim, yeah, and they claim going back to uh, four five one, for example, or pre HTTP. Um, you know, it works fine. It's, I don't know that it's HTTP specific, but it that's the suspicion. That's uh, that's possible, I think, that they go back to the... I have seen universally the simulators, they have problem with many avatars all using HTTP. And no matter what version of the viewer you use that uses HTTP texture download, you will see the exact same thing. So uh, this, then I, I don't know how to address this, um, you know, moving well, forward. Okay, first thing would be uh, start looking at the log file. If you are getting permanent failures in texture HTTP, it's going to show up in the log file. Um, we're going to fail with a, with a final retry with an error code and a bunch of, of related information. So you can pretty much confirm pretty quickly whether or not they're getting um, serious permanent failures 
support texture operations in HTTP with the log files. And these will be distinct from 404s. 404s are not found. We see those every now and then because the texture reference is not valid, but other reasons for permanent failure would be interesting. You can tell us whether it's one way or another. Um, when I updated the texture console, I put mesh errors in, but I didn't do anything about um, HTTP errors. That would be another useful place to put things in the future, start monitoring error counts. But um, for now, anyway, the long file will have the truth. Um, let me know what you find, um, because that definitely points in one direction or another. Um, our services, I definitely absolutely see busy sim hosts uh, having their input queues saturated. And when that happens, you are going to retry. And it's, I've seen some pretty hard cases of that. Um, uh, some of the big... Um, uh, sort of social things that get put on Second Life, uh, the uh, cancer uh, things and so on, will often get put on, concentrated on Simos, and these really become victimized by this problem. But again, permanent failures, they'll go up in the logs, and you can examine this. Um, beyond that, uh, well, I can um, see what I can find out, but I'll be push and ask a few questions of some people. but the, they just Getting like, logs is a challenge. Okay, you know, in the case of the users that have the problem, by the time they get back to us, they've already rolled back to the previous version, and then they refuse to go back to, you know, get some logs for us. But what really just mentioned there in local, I don't know if you might have missed that. Yeah, getting getting logs from users is like pulling teeth. And of course, none of us can reproduce it. A lot of them just seem to want to have fun. They don't want to do anything to help themselves, honestly. Well, what gets me, what gets my boat is that they, it's the people who say, I'm just going to roll back and maybe the next version will be better. <laughs> it won't be because we need you to help us find the problem. Persistently optimistic. People who are reporting uh, that they have symptom X, symptom Y, and high ping times, their problem is the high ping times, right? And that's actually most likely not a viewer problem. That's most likely a network problem between them and the thing they're talking about. They make the claim that when they roll back, um, the ping issue is resolved. Yeah, but that, but, but we all know what. Uh, I, I mean, if if you if you get out of one program, you know, spend ten minutes reinstalling to some other version, get back into a new program, you're not actually doing an apples to apples test. No, of right. course. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's it's like me right at the moment. I, I, I'm having an issue with ping times. Uh, it, it has to do with being around a large number of avatars, but it comes and it goes. It doesn't stay all the time. Uh, I can do a class with 30 people in it one day and have no problems with my ping times. Uh, today, however, uh, if I'm rendering avatars, my ping times are up in the 600, 700 range. I turn off rendering of avatars and my ping time is down 120, 150 range. And it's just, there's no rhyme or reason to it for me. Is the, uh, I assume, Monty, do you know, uh, I assume the ping time is a measurement of UDP packet? Round trips? The uh, ping depends on whether ping it's fake ping time or real ping time. And I've never looked at the fake ping time that we actually publish, which is not the same as a true network ping time. It's I, I believe it's just the round trip um, keep alive 
uh, based on UDP that we keep, we have. Um, the ping time viewer displays in the statistics is the you send a UDP message ping to the simulator and it responds with a message, you know, pong. And those depend on a simulator cells because the simulator is busy and doesn't have a time to send you back that pong message, you will see bigger ping time. So right. CPU load on CPU load on the simulator can affect the ping time as displayed in the in the start floater. Right, but that's also going to be true of all you know, of affecting everything else that's affected by by that. Like the, the um, so it's so it's yes. not um, it's not an ICMP ping that's being responded to at the network. No, it, no, it's not ICMP. It's it's a it's a protocol level. level. Yep. Hmm. So. Uh, believe me, I'm sensitive to uh, <laughs> any complaints and or problems reported with HTTP, but I gotta have data, not anecdotes. Um, and the worst one around this sort of informal A/B testing that users do is the run of viewer, and it's just awful. It's it's slow. It takes so long to load textures and and meshes, and they finally quit at the end and put up and start another viewer, and it was fast. And they didn't clear the cache between those two runs. So bad viewer did all the hard work. Good viewer got a hot cache and magically ran well. Totally useless data for me. Uh, <laughs> that's what the reports are. I don't know. I don't know. If uh, we we know all too well. Do you still have the ability to turn off HTTP detection downloads and switch over to UDP in V3? Uh, our viewer does, yes. You can turn off HTTP textures. For everything yeah. but uh, big textures. Yeah, and meshes are also also HTTP only. But that's that's what I do. I I go into a place and when I start to see timeouts in in my log for HTTP, I just flip it over to to UDP and then everything it, it loads fast. Unfortunately, that's tragedy of the commons because you are literally going through the simulator with UDP, and everyone else is paying for it. It's not even a, the nice case of going through a web service that no one actually goes through simulation. Um, and it's like the uh, Mesh 1. Someone turns it on, and all of a sudden they can do 500 or try to launch 500 connections um, against a simulator again. And they will, and it's great for them. And it is immediately becomes a disaster for everyone else. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but if HTTP server is saturated and I'm getting 500 timeouts in a row, I, switching to UDP seems to be less impactful on the on the simulator host than than using HTTP, which is about to kill over. I know it's the simulator process itself that has to send you the texture via UDP, but that seems somehow more efficient, you know, server it's load not. wise. It's it not. It is not. No, not anyway. I know what happens. The simulator and what, how it goes out the back end, and it is the worst possible scheme possible. Um, it is hilariously bad, um, and so it's I, I I can't if I could turn off UDP textures, I would do it immediately. Someday he will be able to. Uh, I hope so. Uh, Worley is just asking, is it bad advice to tell someone to use, to set a mesh use get mesh one to true? Because that seems to fix for some people. I'd like to know more about those people. I don't really want to officially do that because I, the get mesh, the original get mesh um, cap is going to go away at some point. And that will give you a support headache when that change happens. Um, uh, so I don't have official advice. I definitely have to advise against any of the 500 connections stuff that doesn't change. Um, Get Mesh 1 still needs limits and probably needs tighter ones than I put on the, um, the current HTTP viewers, the current release viewer. Um, I, just can't. I'm not willing to go so far as to tell you not to tell them to do that yet. But it is a, a action of last resort, and it 
it's going to leave people open to problems down the road. But I want to know about these problems. If we can find some people who uh, are cooperative, probably to put in some effort, uh, reliable, and can do some consistent testing. Uh, really, do we have any like jurors that actually have users who submitted logs? We'll do our best to find somebody for you, Monty. But uh, you know how that is. Monty, what what sort of data would be useful to you? Let's see, I want to do A-B runs with um, consistent testing of uh, textures or meshes or anything else of that sort. I um, actually have a Google Doc somewhere, which is how I do our internal testing procedures, just to make them more consistent. But it's a matter of finding someone willing, really. Um, very few users will go through it in a reliable fashion. Um, but they're, they've filled out Jira's really, right? I know there's at least one uh, who had come to me uh, complaining of the issue, told me he rolled back, um, and I managed to twist his arm to sign or to make a comment on one of our Jira's. Um, and uh, he said that because I explained to him, like, we can't fix it if, you know, if you, if you want it fixed, we need your help. And he, he, in the end, told me he'd be more than happy to do whatever you know, we need him to do to, to help. So that's at least one person. I can't remember his name, but I'll find it. I'll find it in the Jira. Okay. Yeah. Him. If we ask him to, you know, reinstall 461, um, run it, you know, experience the problem, close it, pull the logs and attach the logs. I have a feeling he'll do it. Um, and maybe I'll ask him even. But, you know, that's that's one person. Let me know if he's uh, just contact me with email, and um, I will um, sort of give you the outline of how we do testing, or how I do testing, uh, to make things reproducible. Thanks, Money. We'll do that. We'll see what we can do anyway. Because it is, you know, it's not a problem that's going to go away. Uh, if these people can't use 461 and it is HTTP related, um, it's not just going to fix itself like they seem to think it will. Other issues that we should be aware of? Um, take I'm Tuesday, good. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah, take a few days off. Actually, Lynn and I won't have as much problem. Uh, are you sure? Well, there'll be requests. But those will probably come later. Hey, Kenna. Um, see local? Us? Yeah, Oops. yeah. Um, I, I actually had somebody looking at that yesterday and I didn't, I didn't hear what the final, um, outcome was and they're not in today so um, it will probably be next week before I figure out what's going on there um, one thing that wasn't clear to me from reading the issue and especially from reading the comments that Worley thank you very helpfully added um, was it the 
question I have is whether the problem is inconsistency on how two users on on how is it true that two users on the same viewer see the same avatar differently or is it true that users on pre-fitted mesh user viewers see avatars differently from users on post-fitted mesh viewers because it's it's true that we made some changes to the avatar in the process of doing fitted mesh the fitted mesh changes um, and so we don't expect them to be identical between the two um, so um, I don't know it's it's not clear to me which is the problem description um, which is not to say we couldn't at least in theory change things back but I, I just want to make sure I understand what the what the issue really is because if if all it is is that pre-fitted mesh viewers display the avatar slightly differently than fitted mesh viewers do we may decide that's just not a bug Okay. My understanding is that the difference is whether you are looking at your own avatar or somebody else. So your own versus every other. It doesn't matter the, the same viewer version on both. So you can be looking at 10 other avatars and you will be seeing them in one way and your identical shape will to you look differently than it will look to them. Okay. All right. Well, there's there's been a bunch more added to this since the last time I read through it. So, um, Okay, yeah, there is more detail there than there was last time I saw. Um, we'll, we'll keep looking at it, I guess. So I guess uh, the, the newest question is not going to be, uh, uh, are my pants on? It's going to be, do I have moves today? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not having to fix the bug because then you have to look at moves all day and it's just not something that's cool. Yeah, but Katty, you like looking at moves. <laughs> if if a woman wears a bra, does a man wear a bra? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is definitely degenerating. Derailed, derailed. Hey, made you laugh, anyhow. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so anyway, I have nothing else bear, to add. Bear, bear in mind, I have to. I, I always run the risk that my boss is going to watch one of these videos. <laughs> So I guess I shouldn't ask if your boss has a sense of humor or not, right? I wouldn't answer if you did. <laughs> uh, did you get rain or snow, Oz, by the way? it's So far, it's all turned out to be rain. Oh, lucky you. It's, uh, we, we still have lots of snow on the ground. It's... Uh, there, are, there are bear patches, but there are mostly... Let's see, we don't even, I don't even have bear patches. There's no sign of, like, life yet. That's well, coming, yeah. yes. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty grim here. It's, it's basically snow and... Mostly snow and patches of mud. Just be glad that you're not in Atlantic Canada, or weren't in Atlantic Canada. No. No. So I think right. are we done? Uh, I I think I think we're done. What? Jessica Lyons here and we're done before one o'clock. Remarkable. It has happened. That's because I got a video to do. Damn good thing I'm sitting down. Somebody else doing April Fools next year. What's going to be? Next I'm re I'm retiring. Year? Strange things are happening. We might even see Lindens using Second Life. <laughs> now that would make a good April Fools show. <laughs> Lindens start living in Second Life. Uh, group bands is being worked on, and there's been some progress, and it's in an RC. Uh, upcoming RC, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that group and things was very, very buggy the last time I have looked at it. Well, we appreciate the help that uh, you all have provided with testing it, so. Uh. So, really, have you been playing with it? Ah, it's much better, okay. Because last time was really nothing works. Ah, so some things work now. Okay, good. I'll have to come back and retest because I added group bands to Radegast and and I added the code without actually having the ability to test on the server because the server was broken. Does does adding like multiple people work and all those bugs we reported barely? Oh, cool. So what time are you gonna need me, Jeff? Yeah. I can still ban and not inject somebody, which is really funny. Um, I don't know yet, Ed. Um, I'll I, I'll promise I'll give you at least two minutes notice. All right. Well, I promise I'll uh, not be away from my computer for more than an hour at a time. I need really to. So. Oh, bye all. Okay. Have a good weekend, folks. Later, Oz. Bye. Have a good one. And uh, I'm off. I'm off too. Have fun, folks. Take care. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Poof. So it's first I'm going to announce they have been acquired by Facebook on April 1st. <laughs>